Yes. All right, guys, let's hop here into the pricing systems boot camp. Um, so first I'll start off by asking you guys, what, what do you guys use to price homes right now? Your system. Your system. What are you guys using to price homes? Comps. Okay. And RPR. Comps. Okay. RPR. Zillow. Uh, Zillow. Zillow. Uh -huh. And uh, truly estimate also. Okay. The tax assessment. Okay. Sometimes, yeah. Yep. I also use Redfin too. Okay. And I don't, I don't use it to price. But that's what people are looking at, and that's what they're. Well, yeah. yeah. As soon as I said that, I said, "No, I actually do look at it." Yeah. yeah. I just don't use. Yeah. What was that last thing you have on there? Tax assessment. Tax assessment. Tax assessment. Below. Red pen. Oh, red pen. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, that's right. Red pen. Anything else? Yeah. 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 Ye
body can't do something unless your mind's on board. So you, we get your mind started first, and then your body will follow. Your actions will follow uh, your mindset. Um, so these are core pricing beliefs. Um, look over these real quick. Do any jump out at you guys? Or do you have any questions about any of these? Sellers determine price. I think it's our job to turn that around a little bit. So I wouldn't say that 100% of the time sellers determine price. Okay. I think that leads into number 20, and that's the most appropriate pricing strategy supports a win win working relationship. <coughs> kind of goes along with it. You've got to drag them in, you got to drag them through. Yeah, and, and Joe, to the point with, with prices, there are some situations, though, that based on the seller's needs, their their price just will not be satisfied by the marketplace. That's right? true, yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're going to determine the price that goes on the market. They have to have that. Yep, yeah. and, and if it's not going to make sense, then we have to make the determination whether we're going to go forward or not. Right. It also says buyers determine values. <laughs> Even if everything looks like that's the right price and the seller says, yeah, that's the right price, it's still up to the buyer. The yeah. buyer makes the final decision. The buyer market may say, nah, it's not quite there. Right. I think 18 is good. People will trust and follow what's logical. So if you can explain <clears> it, like you said, show them the high prices, the low prices, and the median prices, then you can sort of come together about pricing yeah. correctly. Yeah. And, and if you have a logical explanation of how you price properties yeah. and someone isn't following you, you know potentially you're just dealing with someone who's... who's Right. And then you get, the and now you know, right? <laughs> then you have to decide if you want to spend all the marketing dollars for it to stay on the market for a year. Or have a plan and say, we can mm -hmm. start here, and then yeah. in three weeks we're lowering the price if we don't right. stay showing. Yeah. So 19, I, I've heard this, um, I had a seller once tell me, you know, it takes an act of Congress to raise the price. And I said, well, Newton taught us a law too, and that is basically what's put in motion stays in motion. If we price it up high and we have to start reducing and chasing the market down, we typically have to go below market value to get it back, eyeballs on it, to get people to put offers in, right? You know, that listing you've had for six months, you know, even once you get it priced right, even if it's below market value, it's a steal, people still want to come in and negotiate because they just feel like they have to, yeah. right? There's no way I can go to my buyer and say, you got to pay full price on a property that's been on the market for six months. They think something's wrong with this, right? right? I think number 10, though, uh -huh. it has been questionable. I, it says seldom pay more than fair market value. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Yeah. That, peop that buyers are paying more. Right. Yeah. And, and in this marketplace, that, that happens. <laughs> it happens more often than it will in kind of what we have in, in a normalized and market. It becomes well, the market just, value. It becomes yeah. the yeah. people that sell. That's true. That's true. If, you can, true. if you can afford it. Because if yeah. you can't get the financing, then you can't do it. All righty. Okay. Anything else on this? I think number four. I like the okay. Between value, price, and entry. Yep. So, and that is basically buyers determine the value, sellers set the price, and then the marketplace, the competition de determines entry. Because there are situations where I know exactly where this home needs to be priced, but damn, there are three comps right there that are, that are on the market active that are killing us. Or there's times when, you know, there's what's available in the marketplace, we can maybe go up another 5, 10 to push it because the, the marketplace is, is so poor right now. Um, you know, so that's, that sometimes has a, has a factor in it. And through this process, we're going to look at each of those three factors. Okay. Next page, page five, becoming a pricing strategist. So we'll walk through this real quick. So what do sellers want? Me. <laughs> Sell for as much money as possible. Right. Well, they want to sell their homes, right? They don't want to list their homes, right? They want to sell them. Um, so why do homes sell? Two reasons. Price and exposure. 
Okay, so our homes in MLS exposed. Yes. Right? As we just went through, 95% of the home buyers look online on the internet. Um, you know, there is a small portion that is under a rock. I don't know how they find real estate. Um, so uh, once it's in MLS, it's it's properly exposed. So in this, this number is actually correct. We did this for 2017. So why do 40% of the homes in MRIS expire? Is that really correct? Or are you looking at some agents, if it's on the market for a while and they want to Withdraw it and re-enter it. Withdraw it and re-enter it. So if that's part of your pricing strategy or your marketing strategy, there's a big flaw there, right? That's the way I look at it. No, you're, you're correct. Some of those have I've seen withdrawn, that. come back on the market, withdrawn again, price reduced, been on the market for three months, you know, with the same agent and finally sold. But if that's part of their ultimate marketing strategy, I look at that as something's way wrong with that. Because the way I look at it is... In this marketplace, if you put a house on the market on Thursday, you should have multiple offers on Monday if you've priced it correctly. If you're having to expire and withdraw it, something's wrong. So the reason that I look at that they, uh, that they expire and withdraw is because they're priced correctly or not. Right. Yep. Okay. So who determines the price? Buyer. Well, the, the list price. Who, when you're at the listing appointment, who determines that price? The sellers do. Right. So at the end of the day, you, you can want to price it somewhere, but if the seller doesn't sign on it, you don't have a listing. So the sellers, at the, all, at the end of the day, they determine what that price is going to be, that list price. Do sellers have access to, direct access to MRIS? Yes. Well, as far as input at Keystone, let's put it that way. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Yep. They stuff up. So they don't. Um, it's so. Why are so many homes in MLS or MRIS priced incorrectly? Because we as agents allow them to basically put them in MRIS priced incorrectly. We know going in, right? And this is just a walkthrough that it, it boils down to us, right? Any listings that go in MLS that are priced incorrectly, it's our fault, right? Or it's we had the ultimate decision whether to go forward with it or not. So, your ability to price homes is not in question. What is in question is your ability and willingness to lead sellers down a path of self-discovery or collaboration uh, that ends with them taking ownership of the correct price entry point. Um, a lot of this is we're not teaching sellers what to think. We're kind of teaching them how to think, which is a difference. Okay. So, going along this uh, role of how how and why do properties come into MLS priced incorrectly? So some of this is a you know agents fail to effectively lead sellers to appropriate price entry point because they lack the knowledge, confidence, judgment, or just don't care. So some agents lack the knowledge, right? They just don't know how to price properties. Um, second thing is sometimes they lack the confidence. They submit to the seller's demands. They just say they roll over and say sure, fine. Let's talk about marketing now. Um, the other one is they lack judgment, right? Uh, agent thinks it's only about taking the listing, right? They just want to win, right? Whatever it is at any cost, get that listing. Um, and then there's sometimes is the, the the lack of caring. The agent wants to leverage the listing, right? It's on a busy road. I'll have my sign up. I'll get plenty of buyer calls. Um, I'll generate more business in the next six months than I will from selling this one listing. It's better to have a listing than want a listing. Um, so I'll just take it anyways. It's a win for the agent, loss for the seller. All right. So let's move on to page seven. So sellers will trust and follow what you can logically and tangi tangibly explain. So is it better to tell sellers or have them self-discover? Self-discover. Yep. So what is the best way to lead sellers to the most appropriate price entry point? So this is, we've got to change their perspective by providing a unique and logical proven pricing strategy, right? <clears throat> so we basically have to walk them down a path and show them how we're also different. Because a lot of agents come in with the same exact tools on pricing. And we talk about this a lot. It becomes opinion versus opinion, right? Your sellers have, a, have an opinion of price. You come in and present another opinion of price. You wind up spending your whole listing appointment trying to bridge this gap, right? So monologue versus dialogue. 
you know, uh, I think Gary Vee said this, one of the speakers we saw in Vegas, you know, what's, what's the most profitable six words in marketing? Where do I sign? <laughs> so, and it's, That's and it was a question, not a statement also, right? And that was good. You, you made it a question. So it's, uh, would you like fries with that? Right? It's questions, right? And the good salespeople always ask questions, right? Um, so presentations which prim primary re primarily revolve around telling sellers what to do only work if the sellers agree with you off the bat, right? Or is in a dire situation. Besides, if you resort to telling, there will always be competing agents with more alluring options. Conversations, on the other hand, revolve around asking questions, which lead to which lead to productive exchanges of ideas, facilitating conversations using a complete pricing strategy. I'm sorry, using a complete pricing strategy is the only way to lead sellers down a logical path. So, unique versus typical, right? Again, we talked about this. A lot of us come in with the same typical pricing tools. So, what we're going to teach you is kind of a, a different, unique pricing tool. Um, bottom line, if a seller is unwilling to listen or follow uh, tangible logic, you are obviously dealing with someone who's unreasonable. Life is short and costs are too high to be in a relationship with unreasonable sellers. If you find yourself dealing with a seller who rejects logic, maybe it's best to say bye-bye. Uh, remember, we live in a world of abundance. All right. Next page. So let's talk about quick analysis of your current approach. So, and, and you'll see through this in the in the box, we'll, we'll hit the box. Um, features, amenities, and conditions are three of the things we use a lot when talking about um, this pricing strategy. Just overview-wise, features, the way I look at what's the definition of a feature, a feature is something that cannot be changed in a property, right? Or is so grossly expensive to change, most sellers just are not going to do it. 